In this video, we're going to be using an inexpensive sling psychrometer that you can purchase off Amazon at a very reasonable price and to check relative humidity. And humidity and temperature are becoming very important these days. So I think you'll enjoy this video. There's a lot of information here. Uh, so please watch it and I uh, hope you learn something from it. Thank you very much. I ordered this uh, sling psychometer kit off Amazon. It, uh, the price was $14.37 and uh, with tax and free shipping because it's prime, $15.38. It's from United uh, Scientific Supplies. And what you get out of here is uh, what's in the kit is your directions and how to assemble it and how to use it. And on the uh, back side, a psychrometric chart. Okay, that relates dry bulb temperature to wet bulb and uh, what the relative humidity is when you've got those two numbers. Now we're going to uh, go into what that all means before we assemble it and use it. But uh, here's what's in the kit. Two thermometers are identical. One of them, you get a little piece of fabric for, for wetting and making a wet bulb. I've already put it on here. It's very easy to do. They give you a couple of rubber bands, hold that on there and uh, just a handle to twirl them and uh, you got a screw you just put them on uh, like this back to back and i hope this is showing up in the video uh, very simple easy to do no problem at all so um, screw that in make sure it's loose i just use a phillips head to give it a little bit because you want them you want it so it will sw swing freely so that's all it is. We'll look at a little bit of the theory of how this works with a dry and wet bulb and, uh, and then actually use it. Let's quickly go through some useful definitions for this project. First of all, absolute humidity. This information, by the way, is from the National Weather Service. Absolute humidity is expressed as grams of water vapor per cubic meter volume of air. It's a measure of the actual amount of water vapor or moisture in the air, regardless of the air's temperature. The higher the amount of water vapor, the higher the absolute humidity. Now, relative humidity, which is what we're interested in here, we're going to be measuring with the sling psychrometer. Relative humidity, also called RH, is expressed as a percent also measures water vapor, but relative to the temperature of the air. In other words, it is a measure of the amount or the actual amount of water vapor in the air compared to the total amount of vapor that can exist in the air at its current temperature. Warm air can possess more water vapor or moisture than cold air. So this is what we are particularly interested in. There's also a dew point. It's, it's similar to, um, and like they say here now, just to absolute humidity, but we won't go into that for this work since we're going to be measuring relative humidity with the sling psychrometer. Let's talk about evaporative cooling. Evaporative cooling differs from other air conditioning systems, which use vapor compression or absorption and refrigeration cycles. Evaporative cooling exploits the fact that water will absorb a relatively large amount of heat in order to evaporate. That is, it has a large enthalpy of vaporization. Temperature of dry air can be dropped significantly through the phase transition of liquid water to water vapor or evaporation. This is from Wikipedia, a good article, you should read it. Now, this is my statement here. Of course, evaporation of sweat to cool the body is a good example of evaporative cooling. This is important because evaporative cooling is what's happening in the wet bulb in the sling psychrometer. Let's look at uh, evaporative cooling and the wind chill effect. This is, look at this blue here, it's liquid water. This is gaseous water molecules in the gas phase. Now, water molecules in the gas phase contain more heat energy than the liquid phase. And water molecules evaporating from the surface of the water basically take heat energy from the liquid phase, causing it to cool. Now, water on the surface in the liquid phase will see a temperature drop as the water molecules evaporate and an even greater drop 
of a breeze or wind blowing across the surface because it helps remove the water molecules. Wind blowing across it will speed up the evaporation and cool even more. This is all important when looking at how the sling psychrometer works. With a breeze from spinning it, blowing across the wet wick on the wet bulb thermometer will speed up the evaporation and the, and the, the degree of that is proportional to how many water molecules are in the air compared to what could be there. Okay, I'll put the thermometers back to back. This is the wet bulb side, dry bulb side on the handle as the instructions uh, demonstrate. Now, I have not put any water on the wet bulb side yet. We're going to try a little experiment before we do the normal operation. So what we're going to do is I'm going to spin these for two minutes. Let me get my timer started. And uh, I'm going to spin them for two minutes, just like we're doing a regular test, but they're both dry. We'll see what the temperature difference is on these. So I'm going to go ahead and start my timer and start spinning. Now, it's important to note that other than being a little bit boring, uh, it is important to keep this spinning up above where you're talking from. You know in the wintertime how you can see vapor coming out of your mouth as it condenses. You see those droplets of vapor. That's a lot of humidity coming out of your mouth. So that can affect the microenvironment around us. So doing this up here will help avoid some of that. Also, the speed of twirling and the wind chill effect on evaporative cooling will make a difference uh, depending on how fast you spin the, uh, this. But I'm just trying to do it just at what seems like a comfortable pace, and we'll see how that works out. Now, what I'm going to do is speed up this part of the video so you don't have to get bored watching it. And after two minutes, we'll take a look at the thermometer to see what we got. Remember, they're both dry. Okay, that's been two minutes. We'll take a look at these thermometers. I'm going to come around to the other side so we can see them in the camera. This one we're looking at now is what would have been the wet bulb side, but it's dry bulb because we didn't wet it. If you look very carefully, hopefully you can see that, it's reading right at 24 degrees Celsius. Let's turn it around, see what the other one looks like. Okay, it's also dry because there's no wick on it. It's 24 degrees Celsius, no difference. Now, the reason is there is no wind chill effect because these things aren't hot. They're the same temperature as the ambient air temperature. There's no evaporative cooling effect because I did not put water on that one. So what we're going to do now is put some droplets of water on this wet one and repeat the experiment and see what we get. Okay, I'm putting a few drops. Of, I'm using distilled water, that's best. That way you won't get a residue after it evaporates. Want it good and soaked, but not so much dripping wet. Okay, I think that's good. Now I'm going to repeat it. I'm going to set my timer on my watch for two minutes. Well, I'm going to watch it until it hits two minutes and, and we'll stop it. So here we go. Okay, that's been two minutes. I'm going to come around, get a better view of these in the uh, iPhone camera. These thermometers are only accurate plus or minus two degrees Celsius. So we have to estimate when they're in when it's in between. So I'd say about, uh, it's right in between 22 and 20, so we're reading about 21. Now the dry one is still reading 24, just like before. So we'll take a look at that on the psychrometric chart and see what it says. Okay, we're going to go with uh, 21 degrees on the uh, wet bulb temperature and slightly over 24 on the dry bulb. 
Now it's much easier to do this on the psychrometric chart. That's dry bulb temperature, wet bulb. If you've got a ruler like this, to kind of line things up. So I'm going to set this on a dry bulb temperature of slightly higher than 24. Okay, and our wet bulb temperature was 21. Let's see if we can find it here. Okay, this is 15, 20, that's 21 right there. So 21 line comes over here. Look carefully, we're kind of right in between the 70% and 80%. So we're actually at about 75% relative humidity. And it is kind of humid and the air conditioning hasn't been running much up here. I'm in an upstairs room in the house. So about 75% RH. So that's how you do it. It's very simple. Now, if you don't like twirling the thermometers around, you can do the same thing with just a fan to get the air movement. Okay, I've got our thermometers here. This is the dry bulb thermometer. That's wet bulb. I've already put distilled water on it. I'm going to turn on this fan here so we can use that instead of twirling the uh, thermometers around. So let me put this uh, phone down and then get the fan started and we'll let it run for two minutes, see what we get. Okay, the fan's running. I'm going to start my timer over here. Let it run for two minutes like we did with twirling the uh, thermometers. And then we'll uh, see what they read. I'm going to speed up this video so, that, so you won't be bored just watching it sit here and, and just blow air over them. So. But we're going to let it run for two minutes. Okay, it's two minutes. Let's go ahead and read these thermometers and see what they indicate. This one's reading 24. Typical for the dry one in this uh, room. Actually, no, it's not. It's reading a little bit warmer. It's reading halfway between 24 and 26, so about 25. This one the wet bulb one is reading halfway between 20 and 22, so about 21. Okay, we'll use our ruler. Makes it a lot easier. Line it up on 25 for the dry bulb temperature. It's right there, that line. Then our wet bulb temperature of 21. So that's 20, 21, 22, so forth. So 20, 21. It's right there. It's right on top of the 70% relative humidity line. So slightly different than earlier in the day. Well, that's to be expected, but uh, you can see the fan is a good way to do this. You can even buy psychrometers that are have accurate digital thermometers and fans built into them. This uh, the small handheld one where you sling it around is just a very inexpensive way to do the same thing. We're going to take a look at uh, what happens to the wet bulb, dry bulb temperatures in the shower. Okay, we're going to do a little experiment in the bathroom. Trust me, I have my clothes on. I wouldn't do that to you. But I've had the shower running for a little while. Cold water, not hot. This room is getting extra humid in here. So what we're going to do is I do wet the bulb. We're going to swing this in here and see how close they come to reading the same temperature? How close are we to 100 percent? Okay, two minutes. Let's look at our wet bulb temperature. It's reading about 20, 20 24, it looks like. Slightly higher than 24 degrees Celsius. And slightly higher than 24 degrees Celsius. Close to 100% relative humidity. If you do this, you'll have fun with it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. And when, with uh, today's humidity and temperatures like they are, humidity is very important. Um, so if you would, like the video, subscribe, check out our other links. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you.